In this tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating how I painted this heron using acrylics and lots and lots of layers. The demonstration I'm about to share with you was taken from a live tutorial, from a live workshop on the Masa Academy. And if you are interested in joining me for my next live workshop, do check the Masa Academy and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. So without further ado, let's jump to the tutorial. I begin all of my live workshops with a pre-recorded preparation tutorial where we cover the background and underpainting stages and this allows students to get ahead for the live class. Here you can see I'm using some mixtures of phalo green, ultramarine blue and some yellow and black. I'll also be adding a little touch of white to that as well. I'm trying to create a lovely soft background where acrylics are concerned it really is all about those layers and you can see I'm really scooping that paint on in a really healthy amount. I'm spritzing the canvas regularly and that keeps the paint open so I've got lots and lots of blending time and you can see I'm just keep working those colours over the top of one another spritzing regularly and just blending those tones together and once I'm happy I use a large mop actually an old makeup brush to blend and soften then I transfer the image over and here you'll see I'm going over those lines um, those transfer lines with a little bit of thin down acrylic we're now on the live portion of this workshop and you'll see what I'm doing here is actually um, using white titanium white to paint the fins of the fish and that's because I want to create some real light coming through there and I'll be glazing some yellows and lighter tones over the top and we'll really get that impact of the light coming through those fins and I'm building up those layers again with acrylics it really is about those layers just keep adding and adding those tones um, and building one color on top of the next In order to capture that light coming through the beak as well I'm putting a really strong mixture of cadmium orange on there and again that's always going to give you that lovely light, that sunlight effect um, coming through the beak. So here I'm detailing around the eye, really paying attention to where the light is passing through so we get that lovely reflected light in the eyes. Now this colour looks as though I'm using just pure white um, but I'm actually not, it's quite a grey down tone with little bits of blue and sometimes purple in there and even underneath the neck you can see I've gone a little bit more towards those yellow tones. So again you always want to start with a darker colour than you want to end up with because we're painting what's underneath and we're we are building those layers on the top. Now, although I'm keeping my strokes very feather-like and loose, at this stage I'm not trying to create feathers. I'm brushing in the direction that the feathers are growing. So this particular tutorial was done in two parts, two live events. Um, so there was a pre-recorded um, underpainting stages and then two live events. This is the blocking in stage. So at this moment, I'm really not focusing on any kind of detail. We're just blocking in those undertones that we can see. And you can see my brush marking is very, very loose. You really don't want to be thinking about detail far too early um, when you're working in acrylics because you really do have to get a lot of those 
foundation layers underneath before you can even think about adding detail. So as I'm coming to the end of this first live session, I'm really looking at putting a rim light on the heron to really again capture that sort of backlit effect that you can see in the reference photograph. So again, even at this stage, at the end of the first session, you can see there's very, very little detail. We've got a lot of undercolour, but there is no real detail in there. Okay, so we're now on to the part two of this Heron live tutorial. And this is where now I start adding some of those details on the top. So you can see that I've got some lovely undercolor there and then I'm able now to go on and start adding that detail. And here we're dealing with the scales on the poor fish and um, that's come to a rather tragic end. Um, but again, capturing that light coming through and that shimmering effect, it really is all about just layering your tones. This is where I'm now adding that glazing onto that lovely white area. And you can see how it gives that impact of the light passing through those very thin fins of the fish. So now I'll start to work on the heron and really start to detail over the top of those lovely bright colours underneath. Cadmium orange is a gorgeous colour for showing bright light. But you can see now I'm toning some of that orange down. We needed that lovely bright in there and then adding those extra layers on top now still gives that feeling of that light coming through that beak. So using a lighter version of the, the white, or it's, a, it's quite a light grey. And again, because I went darker underneath, I'm able then to start adding lighter tones on top. But the aim isn't to cover those under colours, it's just to add those layers to really give some depth to your painting. And once those blocking in layers are done, this is where I'll get a little bit more specific with my brush marks to really try and give the um, effect of those feathers. And again, you can see all of those layers underneath, which is super important. So 
So here I'm using a wonderful flat brush. This is from Rosemary and I will leave a link in the description box to some of the recommended brushes that I use regularly. This particular one has a wonderful chiselled edge and I'm able to get those lovely skinny lines for those feathers as you can see here and you really do need a brush that can retain its shape. So I continue adding those layers and building up until I've got something I'm happy with um, and finishing any tiny little details. Here I'm using a smoosher brush and again I'll leave a link to those in the description and I'm adding a little bit of dry brush work here and this allows me to soften some of my brush strokes. I really do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and it's given you some ideas how to add those multiple layers to really bring your acrylics to life. If you are getting value from my lessons on this channel, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.